Welcome to the next decade of the Market Buzz. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician, and here to host this unique show. We look for long time frame trades on weekly charts. Please follow me on Twitter at Schnell Investor and check out my website at gregschnell.com. So the market is really struggling here, trying to figure out a direction. I, w- I want to focus a little bit about coronavirus and when to buy the dip. And I think one of the big things that uh, we get caught up in is the media news. And so uh, as the market rallied yesterday on the back of the World Health Organization announcing that it was a, a dangerous global emergency, uh, one of the things we need to have a plan for is when to start looking to put money back to work. And so we're going to cover that off a little bit uh, today. Chicago PMI came in at 42.9, and and obviously that was viciously low. Uh, Boeing is in, in Chicago, and some people think that that might be the reason that that data point was so uh, down and out compared to the rest of the the U.S. So anyway, we're going to keep track of some of that information, but that's obviously, and Boeing is a big part of things. So if Boeing is slowing down, uh, they could drag down the economy a little bit. They um, they generate a lot of money. So uh, the market's been struggling after the Fed meeting. So the Fed met on Wednesday. Uh, yesterday, we had the pull down and then we had the rally back up trying to get through the World Health Organization announcement. And then this morning, we've opened lower even after Amazon blew the top off the chart. So uh, lots going on out here uh, around the market. We're going to walk through a little bit of that. I mentioned on Wednesday, Britain leaves the EU. And I want to continue to watch their chart and just see how it hap- how it uh, holds up. I think one of the bigger things um, in that area of the world is can they get growth going? And will this help or will this actually hurt uh, having Britain leave. Now, apparently their deals, um, their trade deals are going to extend through to the end of the year. And if they don't uh, sign anything new, it'll be a a hard exit. So we'll be watching that. So obviously the coronavirus is in the news and and spreading rapidly. Um, The big thing is, uh, you know, it slows down mainland China. The real question is, does it slow it down for one, two or three weeks, a month? three months, we, we just don't have an answer. So I want to talk specifically about how to follow that. And we're going to go into some of the China stocks and, and take a look at that. So a new stock charts feature is showing up here. And I, I mean, I, I've already played with it a little bit, but I want to bookmark it on my browser. It's such a nice place to go and just get the whole piece of data all in one spot. So we're going to cover off a lot here. Let's jump into the charts. So first of all, here's England. And what I want to show on this chart is, again, just struggling to get through this high and we're watching. So last week we made a lower high and a lower low, closed roughly in the middle. This week we're opening in the middle, uh, sorry, opening at the top of the bar, closing near the low of the bar. And we're trying to hold above the 40-week moving average. So getting pretty important place on the chart. Obviously, this uptrend, we'd like to see that hold, call it three three and a quarter. Um, don't want to see us get much below that. Widening out the picture, you can see that the PPO is at a level that it has historically rolled over at. <clears throat> so that would be good if they can uh, continue to surge past here. But uh, just a, an area of caution over there if you're uh, focused on investing in uh, UK-related stuff. It, the market is pulling back there, much like uh, the US market has pulled back this week. But I think we need to keep an eye just on this is a pretty big deal it's been 47 years they've been a partnership so uh be interesting to see how it how the market handles that um in terms of the actual stock market here in the us what we've got is the nasdaq advanced decline line rolling over quite hard as price has held up and we can just refresh this here um so what i want to watch for is does this finally start to um, bounce in here and we get some sort of break higher i probably you know if i drew a trend line off the 2018 low i probably don't want to see that trend line break that's pretty big and then um, just go down to the advanced decline percentage for the 1500 so we've broken the october to december uptrend line and i think now what we want to watch for is uh, for the 1500, um, we probably don't want to see this break below 4800. So that's kind of an area on the chart I would expect to hold, at least for a bounce. So let's check that out. But those are kind of things I'm watching for just in the near term. Going over to the S- SPY, um, the the big issue we've got here, obviously, is we made the top, we rolled over, we've come down, we 
tried to rally for two days, failed, tried to rally yesterday and have now failed. So there's a little short uh, trend line in here that we probably don't want to break through on Monday, today or Monday. And if that starts to break down, that's probably going to cause a little bit more selling. Um, the 50-day moving average is down at 30 or 320. So if we can get through, if we fall through here and, and end up sitting down there, we'll watch to see how it reacts to the 50-day. Um, the the big trend line off the lows here, we're kind of coming into contact with that in terms of momentum. If we start to get down there, it's got a little bit more room to go. That's another place that just, you know, it's been so positive for so long. Are we going to just come down and bounce off the zero level? That would be a much better place for us to kind of um, analyze the market, I'll say. And then looking at the weekly, uh, the PPO was very, very high on this uh, chart. We got up to levels in 2018, but prior to that, it was back in the QE periods. So we just want to watch and see if this rolls over a little bit more. Um, I'm expecting it to, to obviously pull back from an extreme level and then give us a better chance to, to make an entry. So this is the update of the NASDAQ today. And what we can see is, you know, five charts are green and obviously NASDAQ uh, lifted by Amazon being such a dominant force and up over the trillion dollar market cap again today. Charter communications holding up really, really well in the face of big downtrends here. So that's a pretty powerful stock when you see how all the other charts are behaving. And then Alexion Pharmaceuticals, that's just been such a dog. It's a surprise it's holding up to me. So maybe something going on there. But Vertex, um, same thing. This one's been a great chart, um, like Charter, and then pulled back a little bit here. You know, maybe that gives you a chance to buy it a little bit lower. But all the rest, the tape is pretty red. We're going to just flip this over a little bit and go look at what's not working in electronic arts. These are, um, you know, these names have been flying and then all of a sudden they're given a pullback. Could be an interesting place to look to start to pick up some of these. You'll notice a lot of the semiconductor names are starting to roll over. Talked about that on the Wednesday show um, a little bit. And on the Canadian Technician video on the weekend, I'll be putting out, uh, I've done a segment specifically on the semiconductor. So if you're interested in that, that'll be on the Canadian Technician blog probably Monday or Tuesday. And then uh, Biogen and Activision Blizzard, these are obviously, these gaming names are starting to bail out hard. I think some of the other names that I was surprised to see move so fast, um, the travel stocks or hotel stocks, the cruise ship lines, they're all getting hit relatively hard for obvious reasons. Um, uh, you know, the one thing to keep in mind, we need to watch for when these are going to start to turn. So one of the things that I have is set up is a China list, a list of stocks from China. And um, when, when you work through this list and you can go to any of the China ETFs and see what are their holdings and that kind of stuff, um, and that's going to give you a list to pull from. But this is over a one-month period, and we still have stocks in the green here, um, even with the beatdown that we've got going on in uh, China due to the virus. So I want to watch these charts, and so here's... Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it, Kui Tao Tao or something. Um, so this chart briefly rallied any sort of a pullback in here, maybe to the 50-day moving average. But then I probably want to jump into the 60-minute or daily and watch to see how it performs and literally use some sort of a chart style like this that's just going to help me see the bases as they develop. So when you when you get a stock that kind of flips over, and I'm just going to put in one here, uh, CVE, uh, just give you an example. So this, the, the market trend goes up, it comes back, it's trying to rally through here, and it just falls over again. What you're trying to find is something that starts to slowly turn back up again. Um, we could probably go to um, hod.to. Yeah, whoops. And, and the reason I want to show this to you is just it's a better way to try and uh, figure out what the market's doing. Just you're, you'll probably see it change um you know very smoothly and as it changes you want to be aware of that so go have some china charts set up start to look at the 60 minute or the daily 60 minutes going to help get this kind of picture as you see it changing so this is capped energy daily bear and you can see it's been rolling over um rolling up 
as the oil market gets worse and, and these stocks are are obviously um, still underperforming the market. And so as this goes higher, these oil names are getting hit. Uh, but use some sort of a chart like this to help show you that things are changing. And again, where to find that list, I, I would just say go, if you don't have a China list already, then go to whatever A shares and go to um, I, uh, some of the China tech ETFs, those types of things. Th those will probably help you. So um, I think, <clears throat> I don't know when the China thing is going to settle. I will say this. One of the things that I've noticed in the markets over the years is it's not so much when the government has the problem solved. It's when the investors know that the government's picked up the ball and are working on it actively. So it, it might be whatever, the coronavirus, it might be the Iraq war, it might be the, um, you know, some particular... Uh, issue like when the Fed was starting to have trouble and then in October stepped in. Uh, the results might not show then, but the investors started to step in knowing that the Fed was dealing with the repo situation. So uh, I think it's bigger. Um, once you start to get the government recognition or the recognition of the government starting to to pick up the ball on an issue and actually improving the situation or or dealing with the situation, then you're going to find these names turn a lot sooner than you think. And obviously the strong ones are going to turn quite a bit uh, quicker than, than the weak ones. So I would continue to look at this list either from a one month or a one week perspective and just see what's turning around and then try to look at that, um, that information regularly and just see if, you know, if there's something starting to improve underlying these things like 10 cent holdings here that chart was really soaring it's now pulled back so perhaps that just gives you a better buying opportunity as this thing um you know it, if the virus continues for a couple more weeks or a month or two months um, as this stock starts to come down in base it was obviously starting to get rolling here recently from 42 to 52 that was a 20 percent move or 25 percent move that's the kind of thing um, as this starts to solve itself that is going to make for a nice uh, spot for entry. So on the, um, on the charts themselves, again, I'd go down to the 60 minute or the daily, depending on how uh, local you want to go. But just having a group of these stocks to look through and then go set them all to the 60 minute charts and just flip through them and then start to watch them to see how they're improving. And that'll give you an idea that um, the, the large institutions are starting to buy these names now that they've pulled back and help you through that. So we're gonna take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, I'm gonna show you the new feature on stock charts. Uh, it was pointed out to me after hours last night and I've been uh, playing with it last night and this morning, I already wanted as a, uh, a bookmark on my browser tab. So anyway, when we come back, we'll hit that. Uh, be right back after this little conversation about technical uh, scans. back and uh, the chart that I was on when we left was on uh, a China stock and we were talking about coronavirus. But what I want to talk about now is a new tool that's available on stock charts and it's literally available this morning. Uh, so go over to the charts and tools tab and you'll see a couple of things going on here. Uh, recently we added cryptocurrencies, now we're adding the symbol summary. I'm going to jump into this page. It's also in one of these box forms here. Down here is a, a symbol summary, so industry summary, market sector, scooter report. Um, this symbol summary is pretty nice, and whether you hit it here or hit it over on the other page, um, I think you're going to be shocked at how good it is. Um, so here's Amazon. What we see on the chart, uh, first of all, you know, we see this big ballistic missile taken off. Um, 
beautiful uh, base had been built, uh, just kind of putting in a cup and handle. So you got the cup, the handle, and all of a sudden off to the moon it goes. And when you look at this, you can click on it as a PNF chart, that kind of thing. I think one of the most outstanding parts of the feature here it's just some real quick technical information, uh, percentage above or below the, the 50 and the 200 day um, EMA. This is really, um, you know, a, a quick place to go look, just say how far it is, is it away from the moving average. And then obviously what's the, the performance year to date one year performance all that type of stuff so when when you're uh, watching a stock on tv and somebody says yeah this stock's up um whatever 10 percent in a month or something you can go back and kind of get a feel for it relative to the other time frames um just having some simple levels here rsi atr adx um you know if if um those are the things you you want to use. I think they're just sitting here. Finally, you don't have to go check everything. You can rank them by RSI. And just, you know, if you know that a 75 RSI is pretty high, I think we all do. Anyway, uh, that gives you an idea of the stock performance without even looking at the chart. Over here, you've got a lot of things um, helping out the share float data, which tells you what percentage is actually floating. And then held by institutions is pretty valuable data. A little bit of price earnings and price to growth, that type of stuff um, showing up up here. And when you have a dividend stock, you can you can check out the ex-dividend date, which is particularly helpful um, for finding, uh, you know, stocks that as the earnings date is coming up, like this is, here says the next earnings date, but you also get the, the date of the dividend, uh, ex-dividend date. So what that means is if you owned the stock before that date and your name is on uh, the stock ownership list that day, you're going to, or the, the day before that, and then ex-dividend day is the day that you'll no longer be included in that. So if we go pick whatever JP Morgan, just to, oops, JP Morgan, and go down here and look, you'll find that the ex-dividend date was January 3rd. And up here, it tells you that the uh, next earnings date is April the 14th. The annual dividend currently is $3.40 or 2.5%. So lots of nice data on here. And again, we, we were looking at the Amazon stock before, and you can just see everything soaring. Well, this one has an RSI of 44. Compare that to a 75, and that's quite a bit different. Um, one of the other things that I really, I think for everybody who's known me, um, the scooter ranking has been a very valuable um, part of stock charts for years now. We first rolled it out in 2007, so it's got 13 years of history. But here we have the gas gauge uh, for how strong a stock is. And one of the things that's uh, particularly helpful, uh, just knowing that the stock is is doing well and obviously jp morgan knows how to make money and they're probably going to stay in the top half of the scale all the time but things like commodity stocks that i like to trade um, roll in and out of this scale quite often and they can give you a good idea so as you see things change so as an example let's go back to amazon and the point i want to make on amazon is looking at the gas gauge for them this was literally a 33 percent scale or something this morning and takes off and it's that kind of base that I really really like so if we go uh, look at it whatever here's Amazon let's go up to the chart and you can click on sharp chart or whatever you'd like I'm going to open it up and obviously this ballistic missile is starting to um, cut through a, a two-year top here and if it can uh, I think it was over 2050 this morning the high of the day um, was uh, 2055 so we we broke through the prior high briefly we've pulled back slightly but one of the things we want to watch for on amazon obviously is you know when you break out through these huge bases that have been built this stock looks ready to rock and and look at the scooter ranking the stock behaved perfectly for many many years it stayed in the top half above 50 almost all the time and then recently it's really been struggling and for me um, you know, it gives you a clue. But one of the things I don't like to buy is I don't like to buy stocks between 30 and 70, just kind of hanging around. Basically, they're going to track the S&P 500 and, and move with uh, whatever the index does. But then you have two other groups of stocks. One is really low that start to change their behavior. And the other is really high and they stay up here for a long, long time. 
So I like them below 25 and improving and above 75 and improving. And this blue line is something I've put on the chart. Now, the way to do that is you go down here. So you pick the scooter line and you you can pick your color or whatever. But in this case, I put a horizontal line on the chart. And if I wanted that horizontal line to be red, I would just put this in. So you'd use a colon symbol and then red. And as I update that, now all of a sudden this line's red on the chart. But the the point would be, Changing behavior on the scooter ranking is a pretty important thing. This stock had been one of the weaker performers for months. It had started to build a proper base, and then all of a sudden it broke out to the upside. All of that's available right on this page. I mean, we can see the chart up here, but we can also see the the Amazon scooter ranking uh, change dramatically. And I can show you just, uh, just want to go get a chart from this morning. Desktop. And I did a screenshot, I think it's this one. Yeah, let's get the bigger version. Ugh, I thought I had it all set up. There we go. Okay, so Amazon, uh, you can see in code red here on the gas gauge, and then uh, the scooter ranking is just gently kind of wobbling in the area. Now, finally, you started to get this breakout. So this is going to be a real-time indicator. I think what you what you like the most about it um, is as the market changes, you can scan for scooter ranking and all that kind of stuff. But just knowing which stocks are positive, have a positive scooter ranking, and then being able to kind of graphically see that is quite um, quite nice. So anyway, with Amazon obviously popping from red to green today, um, I think there's probably a setup for a trend change. We're going to have high volume, that's for sure. And again, one of the things I mentioned it a couple of months ago, but or weeks ago, but you know, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't bet against Amazon for a couple of reasons. One is they've been building all of these distribution centers. And if we start to get drone deliveries of Amazon packages, um, I think it was Ballard Power Systems now has um, some fuel cell technology that allow, allow them to power a drone between carrying between 20 and 55 pounds so that's huge you could deliver groceries literally by drone um, from distribution centers so i think amazon's just getting started on this wave and if all of a sudden you start to see these big um, r relatively uh, large powered drones bringing the groceries right into your backyard it could be quite a quite an amazing um, evolution for us and again just the way Amazon is getting set up here with the distribution center everywhere. They're, they're fully look on board to get this whole last leg of distribution cost down using drones. And I, I would expect, obviously, the revenue and the profit on the stock to just go um, ballistic more and more as they get better at that. So anyway, I like the shape of the chart. I like the base that it's built it's now breaking above that base and again they've been adding cost structure by putting in all of these warehouses in every major city um i think they literally you know circle on the map and say okay how many people live here and, and start to build their warehouses out with that sort of structure um, the chart is just telling you today that things are improving and i, I would continue to watch this over the next whatever uh, 10 years and I think we'll see the the base that it broke out from a long time ago this is just starting to set up again um, you have access to both different types of charts here you have the advanced chart which is the ACP charting platform and the sharp chart plotting platform um, I need to do more work to get over onto the ACP platform as I typically uh, old habits die hard I like to stay over here on this sharp chart one um, just a few other things that I haven't pointed out yet on the stock. So when you look for Amazon here, one of the things you're going to see is any of your predefined scans. Um, so stock charts has a list of predefined scans. And as a stock goes through some of those signals, it'll tell you, um, you know, what's happening. So as an example, Amazon has all of these um, uh, positive predefined scans that happened today. It was pretty much listed and, and they broke it. So they broke above the Keltner channel and the price channel, et cetera. And then if we went and looked at Facebook, it would have the opposite, right? So these predefined scans just give you um, uh, different signals that you can watch for. And then when you click on this list, it'll also tell you all of the other stocks that had that same sort of thing today. So here's breakaway gap ups and you've got four of them. Um, Decker's outdoor, uh, Let's just click.
click on the stock here. And, and when you look at Decker's Outdoor, you know, big ballistic breakout over and above the, the previous range, that looks pretty sweet. And again, if you wanted to go back to this uh, summary tab, I think one of the things um, to remember is there there's no place to enter the stock name in here anymore. It's a one place entry. And up here, they've changed the box, set it up so it's symbol summary as a default. And you would just put in Deckers, obviously, and, and get that information. So um, it'll tell you everything you want to know about this stock. But more importantly, uh, help link you to some other names. And sometimes this... Um, this uh, alert deck hasn't worked and I already told my friend Bill about it that um, sometimes it doesn't load properly. So he's working on that, but just hit refresh on your browser and it'll probably catch up. So uh, new 52 week highs moves above the upper Bollinger Band. So again, the stock market's been struggling for the last few days. You can just hit this new 52 week high tab from any stock. Now I wanna show you Facebook uh, before we go. And so I'm just gonna to scroll to the top of the page here and we're gonna put in FB. And again, this stock really got um, a, a difficult whip here. So it ran up, made a new high and then gapped lower and just wiped everybody out. So that was obviously hard for anybody who, got, who bought the 52 week high uh, the day before earnings. But as we run down the stock here, now we're starting to see exactly the opposite trend where Facebook had been sitting right in the middle. It's kind of an area I don't want to own. Briefly jumped up to 80, so just enough to give you a new high on the scooter ranking and then failed hard. Um, very tough technically for, for traders. Um, I will say that, you know, quickly you can see the stock's out of favor now. But as you look down here, uh, you know, all of the indicators are now negative. And then any chart lists I have with Facebook in them, and this goes all the way back, um, all of the blogs I've, I've written, I always save the charts in one blog. So anyway, they're all sitting in here and I had numerous uh, versions of Facebook. And I, as you go through, you'll see Amazon or whatever. But I think the, the clue on this single page is your ability to move around. So if you like gallery view, it's right at the bottom. You can jump down here and just see, you know, how are stocks performing? And this is your intraday, daily, weekly, monthly. And you can set up those chart styles independently. So lots of variability here with this. So I'm pretty much uh, uh, day one, one added to my browser, use it every day. I think it's got a lot of, uh, a lot of help in there. And obviously, uh, the PNF charts for people who like to use them, this Facebook still on a bit of a ballistic, or not a ballistic, but a nice reasonable climb up, obviously giving it back today. I would expect this 196 level to hold pretty hard if it starts to break down through that. That might show a change in trend character for Facebook. Um, Amazon has just gone through the opposite of that. So it's just turning up and it's been trying to make this base and now all of a sudden it's taken off. And Google um, as one of the other uh, fang names um, has done uh, really really well and this is looking like your flag pattern up here bull flag where you come up make your flag and then all of a sudden it turns around and breaks out and uh, we'd look to move higher again okay let's go back and quickly review the market i think the biggest thing i'm worried about here is we still got more outfall from this coronavirus it looks like we're going to probably test this trend line today perhaps break it to the downside so be careful out there um, we've been warning, I've been warning for a little bit, but thanks for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs Wednesdays and Fridays at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. You can also see the recording on the Stock Charts TV YouTube page, and you can also find U.S. and Canadian market reviews, um, my blog on the Stock Charts, or my videos on the Stock Charts YouTube page. There is a special um, on there with Ralph Akampura. Go check that out. Thanks. Bye-bye.